Thank you, Chairperson, for giving me the floor. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as the Chair said, I'm William Wanza from the Trade Law Center. I'm presenting on a review on SADEX market integration agenda as it supports regional industrial development. Um, this is based on a paper that I've uh, co-authored with my Executive Director, Trudy Hartzenberg. Uh, I have quite a number of slides, so I'll try and um, uh, go quickly through them. But just to set the context, and I think it's as we've been discussing and as we heard in the keynote address, on how industrial development is now uh, given priority focus um, on the African continent level and prompted especially with developments in the commodity markets um, where there's now more focus on beneficiation of natural resources, uh, minerals, and also noting that the traditional approach to market integration isn't really resolving um, the industrial capacity and diverse, diversity constraints that uh, most economies are actually facing. And, and so this is really on the, on the minds of most policymakers, as, as most of you will be aware, uh, on really how to enhance the capacity of, of African countries to competitively produce um, tradable goods and services. Um, so even though it's at, it's, the focus is there at the continental level, even at the regional level, um, the different regional economic communities are actually um, at, at trying to address specific industrial development concerns. And this is within the context of the 21st century um, production and trade networks characterized by global value chains, fragmentation, and servicification of production, outsourcing, and offshoring of uh, not only in manufacturing, but also in services sectors such as finance and telecoms. And the focus of the presentation will be on the SADC um, REC in particular. Uh, having given that contextual background, I'll, uh, this is the rest of um, my presentation. I'll quickly just go through um, the approach to industrial development that has emerged at the continental level, at the TFTA level, and we see how it is also reflected at the SADC level. Um, when I get there, I'll then just map, it's sort of a maze of industrial development policy um, documents and legal um, instruments. So I'll just really just map that out and focus on the SADC trade protocol as I, as I discuss market integration in its link with uh, industrial development um, and then before I conclude. Um, as, as the chair has said, and I think as we also heard in the keynote address, there's a three-pronged approach to industrial development um, at the continental level, um, looking at market integration. So the CFTA, uh, the negotiations of which were launched last month, um, which is linked to the boosting intra-African um, trade, which is looking at enhancing regional uh, value chains within Africa to enhance intra-Africa trade. Um, this is linked to the, to the AIDA, which was adopted, I think, in around 2010, uh, Accelerated Industrial Development um, of Africa. So there's uh, programs and a plan of action in, in select sectors. This is then tied to the Program for Infrastructure Development in Africa, the PIDA, which focuses on those four sectors, energy, transport, water, and ICT. Uh, we see that that three-pronged approach is also replicated um, at the TFTA level. Um, the TFTA agreement, as we heard, um, was launched. Um, and as market access negotiations are continuing, um, negotiations on industrial development and infrastructure development are also going to commence. Within the SADC um, context, this three-pronged approach has now uh, been seen, especially in the revised RISDP, which was adopted in April. Um, the initial RISDP had those four priority areas, um, but we noticed the change, especially in priority A, where it's gone from a focus on trade and economic liberalization, the linear approach to integration from an FTA customs union, monetary, monetary union, as we've been discussing, to more a market integration uh, linked to industrial development. So it's, it's now especially high on the SADC agenda. And within uh, priority B, we see infrastructure being tied to the regional infrastructure development master plan, which I'll also come back to later in my presentation. Uh, so now there's a shift within SADC from the linear approach to uh, now consolidating the FTA um, and also now linking the FTA, synchronizing it with the TFTA and, and the CFTA. Um, but particularly, I think, I think also for um, the purpose of this presentation, there's a, there's a focus especially on the role of uh, regional value, value chains, um, especially as, as a leeway to industrial development. Um, I'll now just map the architecture of industrial development um, policy and law um, within SADC, uh, just starting with the policy framework. There are a few um, documents that have been adopted um, over the years, starting with the Industrial Upgrading and Modernization Program, adopted in 2009, which uh, highlights a few 
sectors which countries may want to um, build their expertise in as, as, they, as they seek to move up value chains. There's the industrial development policy framework which um, emphasizes industrial upgrading, um, industrial deepening and also industrial diversification. And now recently there's a SADC internationalization strategy which was adopted in, at the head of an extraordinary summit of heads of state and government in April 20, um, 2015 which is now an operational document to try and operationalize those two um, documents um, also in addition to the, to the RISDP. The legal framework, the SADC Treaty provides the, the underpinning, um, the basis for the, the SADC region itself and the treaty then provides for a number of protocols that can then be uh, concluded in different sectors so as to enhance policy convergence and harmonization of national policies in respective sectors. Um, the focus of my presentation is on the protocol on trade which has those six subsections and uh, I'm going to highlight one at most two issues within um, each, each, each section um, in the interest of time. Um, but then the focus there will really, will really be on how market integration and the commitments by member states, how they're being upheld, how they're designed, and how they can actually promote or potentially undermine um, industrial development efforts. Uh, so the protocol on trade is the basis, but then there are also some directly related protocols to the protocol on trade. Um, some of those are the protocol on finance and investment, or also known as the static FIP the protocol on trade and services, and the new protocol on the tribunal, which I'll also talk on, on, on the institution and dispute settlement um, section. Um, there are other protocols which can be seen as covering enablers of industrial development, education and training, employment and labor, energy, environment, facilitation of movement of persons, transport, science and technology, and innovation. But there are also sectoral protocols which actually uh, seek to develop individual sectors such as fisheries, forestry, mining, um, shared water courses, tourism, wildlife. So definitely a vast um, legal and policy framework which would uh, need to be implemented in quite a coherent way. Um, I've, I've sort of just limited the scope of our study to focus on the protocol on trade um, because that's where market integration is really supposed to, is really supposed to happen. Um, so also just to emphasize that industrial development isn't a new issue uh, within the market integration um, Agenda, one of the objectives of the protocol on trade actually is the diversification and industrialization of the region. So it's not a new thing, but then I think over the years, as we've been reflecting, we now see it coming to, um, to the top of the agenda. Um, I'll go into section A um, on, on trade in goods, uh, where I think most of the focus has been, um, which is on tariff liberalization. There's a clear article um, which says that member states will will phase out um, and uh, eventually eliminate import duties. And this was supposed to have been uh, completed in 2012, um, and there are currently 12 out of the 15 member states that are participating in the FTA. Uh, Seychelles has, has just submitted an offer which has been approved. And most of these countries have completed their phase downs or will be completing by this year. So we really see that tariffs are not so much an issue anymore in the market integration agenda, um, but then as tariffs have been coming down, we've seen an increase in non-tariff barriers um, replacing these tariffs as, as barriers to trade. So this is in contravention to Article 6, uh, 6 one, which is clear on, on the elimination of, of existing NTBs and uh, calling on member states to refrain from imposing new NTBs. Um, according to a World Bank study in 2011, um, NTBs are, uh, were affecting at that time about one-fifth of SADC's, um, SADIC's trade. Uh, there are a number of um, NTBs that have been reported on the tripartite online reporting mechanism. Um, and I, I will be highlighting uh, some of these um, in, in trade, trade facilitation especially, um, in SPS and restrictions and prohibitions on, on, uh, on import and export, especially affecting agriculture. Um, but I think at the outset, just to say that it's, it's mostly because of a lack of regulatory reform at the national level as countries are actually pursuing their own national industrial development objectives that they're actually contravening the, the commitments within the SADC trade protocol. Uh, so a good example would be in the import and export restrictions which are um, provided for in Article 7 and 8 uh, which say that member states cannot apply quantitative restrictions 
um, except where, uh, where, where provided for in the protocol. And Article 9 provides the exception that you can only uh, implement these um, restrictions if they're for the protection of human and animal and plant health or life, um, protection of public morals, or to relieve um, shortages of foodstuffs. Um, there's a paper that um, Trudy Hudsonberg and Paul Kalenga have just done. It's actually in, co in collaboration with UNUIDA as well as a working paper, which is looking at the national policies which are being implemented um, in, some, in some of the SADC member states. And you actually see um, some of the measures that are being, being implemented, for example, in Botswana, where there's, a ban, there's, there's been a ban on, fresh, on imports of fresh pork, restrictions on poultry, um, the beef export sector being a state monopoly, restrictions in, in different um, imports of maize, wheat, and other agricultural and horticultural um, products. In Namibia, um, import levies on fresh fruit, restrictions on maize and wheat, um, government control of, of buying and selling of maize and wheat in Zimbabwe, um, permits for fertilizer, etc. cetera. Um, if, if you look at some of these measures, you see that they're not, at the outset, they don't really fall under um, the exceptions allowed for under um, Article 9 of the SADC trade protocol. So this is an example where, um, as countries are pursuing their national industrial development motives, this is actually clashing with the market integration commitments and undermining the development of regional value chains, especially in the agro-processing agro sector. Um, I'll, I'll come back to, uh, to, the, to this issue when I talk about dispute resolution, because um, enforcement of the commitments is, is a vital aspect of the integration agenda. Rules of origin um, in, in customs procedures, um, I think Annex, um, Annex 1 to the protocol actually provides all these rules of origin, but they've been a contentious area um, created to encourage um, forward and backward linkages, um, but then they're actually having the adverse effect. Um, the rules of origin in SADC products specific um, and, and quite complex with all the descriptions that are required. and. Uh, we actually see that these uh, are running counter to industrial development efforts um, in the areas of textile and clothing, for example, um, wheat, and, and we actually feel that they're out of tune, and I think it's been discussed in a number of fora with 21st century uh, realities of production and trade. Um, and this is an example of uh, not just member states not upholding commitments, but the actual um, instrument within the protocol that actually runs counter to um, industrial development. Uh, trade facilitation, I, I, I think I'll leave this to Brian because I know that you, um, he's, he's going to talk um, a lot on this. Um, but I think this is where the infrastructure arm, um, I think, really comes in. Trade facilitation mainly being about soft infrastructure, um, but at least a positive development being the development of hard infrastructure, the regional infrastructure development master plan, um, which we feel that should go, um, should, should be implemented hand in hand with the, with the trade facilitation agenda. Um, section three on trade laws. Um, I'll, I'll just the, those are the different provisions um, in this section on trade laws. But I'll just highlight um, SPS and a, a case that we've been following at Tralac on imports of organic honey from Zambia into South Africa, um, being restricted access because of um, uh, South Africa's. Um, rule that all importation or imported honey should actually be irradiated and once you irradiate the honey it actually ceases to be organic um, so this is a case that was um, lodged on the on the tripartite online mechanism back in 2011 but still hasn't been resolved um, but it act I think this actually highlights and well the critical thing being that um, South Africa or well, Zambia's request an exemption from the rule, um, especially because of tests that were done by the South African Department of Agriculture. But in spite of that, um, the rule is still in place. It hasn't been resolved. Uh, and it actually highlights the implications of, uh, of the dispute settlement mechanism in, in, in SADC. Um, firstly, the inability of the online mechanism to actually enforce removal of this because it's been, it's been there for four years. Um, but then also when we come down to the institution within SADC itself, the one responsible for dispute settlement, the tribunal, where now disputes have been limited to um, disputes between partner states, meaning that private traders cannot come to the tribunal to contest um, such a matter. Um, would, they then, would they then rely on Zambia um, to perhaps take the case to the WTO? It's an unlikely scenario. Um, but then there's actually in Annex 6 of the SADC trade protocol, 
a panel procedure that is provided for, and it hasn't been utilized by member states, um, but we're actually encouraging that I think it's time that this um, panel procedure is explored, especially to um, resolve some of the more technical um, issues, such as the, the, those covered in, in the trade laws. Um, Trade-related investment matters. Um, obviously, um, in, in, uh, international investment uh, being a dynamic gain of region, um, region integration and, and pivotal to the industrial development process. Article 22 of the protocol um, provides for cooperation on investment and the SADC FIP then, provide, then gives provisions. Um, I think what, what, what we would highlight there is um, international arbitration that is provided for um, within the SADC FIP. Um, there's a possibility for the tribunal, ICSID, and ANSI trial. As I've just said, um, disputes within the tribunal are, are limited to partner states, so investors only have ICSID and ANSI trial. But we believe that there is a gap in the ability of the framework to actually protect the rights of individual um, citizens, especially when we're now looking at issues of beneficiation of natural resources, resources which actually come with health and environmental concerns, whether it's through emissions or it's uh, disposal of waste, etc. Um, so the Article 14 of the FIP actually grants governments the right to regulate in the public interest. Um, but due to the reasons that I've stated, governments can only have recourse to national courts. They cannot um, bring a case, for example, against an, an investor to the SADC tribunal because it's limited to partner states. And they can't take it to the ICSID or ANSI trial because those forums only allow for um, petitions by investors and not by governments. And also individual citizens, civil society organizations would also, for the same reasons, be limited to, to their national courts. Um, I'll skip these issues. There's a section on, on other trade-related issues, and there's developments in services and in competition policy, which are, which are um, pertinent for the governance framework. Um, but I think just to also then just emphasize uh, on, on the sixth section of the static trade protocol on the institutional um, arrangements and dispute settlement, um, that the, the limit of the jurisdiction to in, inter-party or, or interstate disputes actually has um, a, a big implication on, on the possibility for uh, protection of the rights of private parties who are actually the ones who are involved in the trade and in the investment. And I think even in terms of enforcement of commitments by member states, um, th this is uh, an area where SADC, the SADC legal framework would actually be seen to be lacking as opposed to the situation, for example, in Comesa and the EAC. So just to conclude, um, definitely the market integration agenda plays, I think, a pivotal role in the industrial development agenda, and we're seeing a few issues coming up. There's some clear provisions that, mem that place obligations on member states, but then these are actually being uh, contravened as, as member states pursue their national industrial development policies, and uh, provisions w there are also some provisions like the rules of origin with instruments that actually undermine the development of uh, regional value chains. There's some important governance issues in investment services and competition policy, and the dispute settlement mechanism um, has an important role to play in enforcement, um, but is currently limited in the extent to which it can play this role. Uh, all in all, definitely industrial development can be attained through effective implementation of the market integration agenda, but would have to really be focusing on some of the issues that I've highlighted in the presentation. Thank you.